Why are Latin American workers so unproductive? Are they simply slacking off, or is there a more complex explanation for their low productivity rates? I'm sure you remember the famous slogan, the lost decade. Well, fasten your seatbelts, folks, because today we'll dive deep into the world of Latin American economics, examine pressing issues like lack of investment, an out-of-date education system, and a ballooning informal sector. For half a century, Latin American economies have been a source of frustration for policymakers and economists, with income per person stagnating at a mere quarter of the US per capita GDP. Latin America has been the world's slowest growing regional economy between 2010 and 2020. Growth is expected to remain weak for the foreseeable future, which raises a crucial question, what's behind Latin America's chronic underperformance? A growing population cannot be blamed for this sluggish economy, as Latin America's population growth has been among the strongest in the world. Instead, low worker productivity seems to be the main issue. But why are Latin American workers so unproductive? Several long-term trends contribute to the region's productivity problem. First, education in Latin America is lagging behind, with 15-year-olds being, on average, three years behind their OICD peers in science, math, and English tests. School lockdowns due to COVID-19 have likely exacerbated this gap. The region also suffers from a lack of world-class universities and adequate digital literacy skills. Secondly, Latin America has an enormous number of oligopolies, with large corporations dominating the market, reducing competition and strangling innovation. Governments often exacerbate the problem by protecting industries and allowing corruption to thrive. But the most significant issue is the expansive informal sector, which fosters lower productivity. In Brazil and Peru, over half the potential workforce is employed informally, and in Bolivia, this figure reaches a staggering 82%. Informal workers and businesses operate under the radar, staying small and unable to scale up production. Informality is fueled by the high costs of hiring workers formally, the perceived benefits of operating informally and corruption with informal sectors. Addressing these problems, however, is a daunting task for politicians. Welfare states such as Brazil's Bolsa Familia may unintentionally make operating informally more attractive. Tackling structural problems will not win votes and attempts to take on powerful oligopolies could jeopardize political financing. However, Latin America needs an economic policy, we think. With the US looking to move industries and technologies away from China, its southern neighbors risk being left out if they cannot offer skilled workers and innovative forms to fill demand. Additionally, the green transition presents both an opportunity and a challenge. Although Latin America is rich in copper, rare earth, minerals and lithium, attracting multinationals to invest in the region will require shrewd policymaking and a better business environment. A smaller, informal sector and increased competition are essential to achieving that goal. Failure to grasp these opportunities now could plunge Latin America into yet another decade of sluggish growth with yet another catchy slogan to describe its economic woes. So, there you have it, folks. Latin America's low productivity rates aren't merely a matter of laziness or poor work ethic. Instead, they're the result of systemic issues such as education disparities, oligopolies, and an extensive informal sector. It's time for policymakers to step up and address these problems head-on if Latin America hopes to break the cycle of sluggish growth and finally reach its full potential. Thank you for joining me on this educational ride and remember, knowledge is power.